500 HTTP error for WordPress. How to fix it? In this video session, we're going to pull our sleeves up and I'm going to show you how to recover from 500 internal server error for WordPress site. I'm going to show you all the troubleshooting methods that you can try and from experience I know by the end of this video session you will not be seeing server errors as in 500 internal server errors for WordPress sites. So let's close all these and I'll take you step by step and show you. Simply log into your web hosting manager, go to file manager. So if you're using a different web hosting, one way or another, your WordPress site resides in a public folder. So then smart thing to do is this. This is the steps that you should follow. First, download .htaccess file. Now that is a hidden file. So you need to have show hidden files as in dot files enabled to be able to see that. Now if you're not seeing it from the web host manager and somehow your web hosting doesn't allow you to see dot files, then I am afraid you need to use FileZilla as an FTP program to log in because then you'll definitely be able to see all the files okay so you download .htaccess file now the smartest thing to do is just go WordPress default htaccess file or you can go to my blog and search for default.htaccess file and this is the code so let's copy that now since I've done a backup I can right click edit select everything that is in here paste the default save changes go back to your site refresh to see if this page isn't working HTTP error 500 is gone now if you've already done this and your site is still not live then this is what you should do next go to wp-content go into plugins here actually I'll show you a quick and easier way to do some backup there right click on the entire folder and then press on compress compress the plugins folder for WordPress because then you have a backup now now what you can do is you can rename the plugin one by one to see you know what is it a plugin issue I'm afraid you need to do this step by step that means in my example I rename this to be this let's rename it and then double check to see if 500 internal server error is gone okay now if it isn't then you can rename that back because then you trouble shooting method for this plugin is explored then you need to take a look at any new plugins you may have installed but one way or another go through each of them rename them what rename them sorry rename them one by one and each time you rename it double check your site if it's back online okay what else can we do at this stage I've just shown you the common methods to recover a 500 internal server error and what if you've tried that and it didn't work then this is what we need to do we need to check the network status of our web hosting because it could be the case that your web hosting admins are doing a backup doing a server reboot it could be anything right now but don't be fooled when you look at this and everything is okay because if it's all okay here and you're thinking well okay it's not to do with my web hosting account and I'm still seeing this that is not true as in sometimes everything may look okay here but 
they're still having some problem on their end okay so next step is this go to databases go to php my admin to see if you can access your database because oftentimes not being able to access a database can actually cause 500 internal server errors because wordpress is trying to connect it we're having mysql connect function not happening and so on now, if you can access php my admin well here it's smart because you're troubleshooting a server error it's smart to export so you have a backup of your database as well now if you're not seeing this then you know your database is not working but if you're seeing that then press on mysql databases and look at the users who are connecting to your wordpress site here you'll have privileges for troubleshooting purposes you can select all privileges because to operate a wordpress site we actually don't need all of these privileges but if you know that you're the only person who is logging into your wordpress site double making sure that all privileges are enabled is good to go okay now once that is done then double check your site to see if it's recovered so double check your wordpress site now, if all is still problem go to file manager again go to document root 4 show hidden files or not it's irrelevant at this moment we go to public underscore html and here well actually well here let me show you you should enable debugging mode or wordpress which is great for troubleshooting right all you need to do is locate wp-config.php right click download so you have a backup right click edit and then simply insert this into that file and then save it i'm showing you my local copy for privacy reasons because this file contains database login information so once you enable debug true then you'll be able to at least see you know, some debugging information you can always look at error logs in my example let's edit this because that's a debug log here i can see php fatal error uncode error call the undefined function mysql connect so this morning when i was having that i can analyze this and say hmm you know what somehow my wordpress site is not being able to connect to the database and yet everything on the web host as in all these steps that i've shown to you is all working but i'm having 500 internal server errors still so then think like this php is a very powerful scripting language but most servers allow you to make modifications as to which php version that your wordpress site is using this could actually be done automatically by using .hdxs directives as in using the latest php version for some servers that is the case and yet it could be that some plugins or the theme that you're updating has something in there and some code in there that is not compatible with the latest php version to remedy that what you can do is well first double check dot htxs file to see I can't show you what codes, but uh, look for add handler. Okay, I'll just show you some samples so you know exactly what to look for for troubleshooting purposes. We've got 
Okay, let's do this. We can add handlers and that, that could be on your WordPress site. As you can see, you know, that's the latest PHP version for Apache servers, right? Actually, let's be smart here. Look for things like this, anything to do with PHP handlers in .htaccess file. In my example, I don't have it, but yours may. If that's the case, let's imagine I did have it like this. Then just put a hashtag at the front of that line so it's commented out and then save changes double check your site if it's no good then you need to then change the php version from this end because now you know changing php version from the web hosting account user interface is going to make a difference let me change it because i identify my example having a problem with the latest PHP version. So let me go see what happens. Currently it's working, but this morning it didn't, right? I know it's rather crazy, but it actually works like that. It's a safe bet to use PHP version 5.6, but it is actually better to use the latest version because it's more quicker. In my example, I just can't upgrade it to the latest version at the moment. So I need to downgrade. So you should do this as well, just to double check if HTTP error 500 response code is gone from your site. Because if it is, then you know it's to do with PHP version. Depending on the web hosting company that you're using, you can see that some of them tell you to modify php.ini file to add certain handlers. If that's the case, you can look at a file on your web hosting folders, file name php.ini, download it, and then right click, add it. Okay, so if you see something like this, then you can delete that line safely for troubleshooting purposes, okay? Because as you can see, some web hosts modify that using php.ini file. So, at this moment, once you have gone through all these steps, your website should be back. If for some reason it isn't, then let's do this. I'll show you one more place that you can triple check something. Well, I'll show you two more places. Apart from this, I don't know any other ways to fix 500 internal server errors. Go and browse into wp-content, go into themes, browse into the theme that you're using, go into header.php file, right click, edit. 99% of the sites will have PHP language character sets defined in header.php file. I'll show you a different one because I just want you to see what that looks like. This here. Okay, so you can actually safely delete the entire meta tag. and then revisit your site, as in, let's imagine you had something like this in your header.php file, it's to do with character encoding, so you can delete that line, or uncommented, if you're deleting things, make a backup, so you know exactly what changes you've made, and save changes and then double check your site. If at that moment your website is still not coming back, then you need to double check the character encoding 
of your database. Press on operations. Let's take a look. We have collation here. Okay, so whatever you do, take a screenshot or write things down before you make any changes here. Because depending on the type of WordPress site that you have, you may be using different character encoding also. Now, which one should you change to? Well, that's going to depend on the type of WordPress site that you have. But remember, this is the last resort for you to tweak things around. Because all these steps that I've shown to you already should actually bring your site back. If it isn't, then it could be to do with encoding collation. Now, that's set on PHP my admin level. Double check. Database character set in wp-config.php file, which can be found under public underscore HTML. So there is a file here, that's a configuration file that sometimes may have set database character set. In my example, it's UTF-8, universal. And also here, double check, define, collect. That's WordPress specific. You can read more about editing that from WordPress Codex because you may be able to make some changes there for the collation, okay? And at that moment, these are all the troubleshooting methods that I am aware of. And so far, I've been able to fix any type of HTTP 500 response codes from a WordPress site. But if at this moment, you've done all these techniques and your site is still not coming back, then you need to contact your web hosting manager, as in your web hosting account service provider, and ask them, saying, I have troubleshot the entire WordPress site. And the fact is, whoever is going to help you, you know, they should know more than what you currently know of troubleshooting 500 internal server errors. Now, the reason I've created this video is because I've actually created another video to fix 500 internal server errors. But some comments say, you know what, I've used those methods, I couldn't bring my WordPress site back. So now you have a better knowledge because in this video, I've shown you all the possible WordPress troubleshooting techniques for HTTP server errors. And it should bring your site back. As I've said, if it doesn't, then you need to contact your web hosting service provider and they will be able to bring your site back. I thank you very much for learning with me. If you benefited from this video session, please do give it a like and share it and I'll talk with you in the next video session.